This week on the podcast, we're joined by Berkeley Butchko. Not only does he have a great name, he knows real estate law inside and out. I was very fortunate to grab some of his time and learn more about real estate law. Hope you enjoy. You're listening to the Saskatchewan Real Estate Podcast, where we chat with real estate experts from across the province to learn what's happening in the real estate market. Here's your host, Ron Caroni. Welcome to the Saskatchewan Real Estate Podcast, where we find experts in the province to help educate us about real estate. And sometimes the home buying process can be quite daunting with so many things that we don't really understand. And from my own experience, uh, when my wife and I bought our condo, we really had no idea about the legal aspect which I think a lot of people can relate with, which is why today we're very happy to have a Saskatoon real estate lawyer, Berkeley Butchko, join us. Well, welcome, Berkeley. Well, thank you very much for having me. Berkeley, just start, it off, start us off. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how long you've been in real estate law. Uh, I guess how far back do you need me to go? I guess I... Uh, Take us actually, from... Originally from Meadow Lake. Yeah. I'm originally from Meadow Lake, Saskatchewan. I uh, grew up there and I've uh, been in Saskatoon now for, I guess, a good 15 years or so. I did my uh, uh, undergrad out at Acadia University uh, in Nova Scotia. I uh, did my law degree here at U of S. I've been a lawyer now for right around getting on 10 years, Uh, uh, basically starting to specialize in law, uh, or sorry, in real estate law around uh, five years ago. before that, you know, when you first get started, you kind of have to put your hand in everything and learn what you want to do and figure it out and kind of was drawn towards real estate. Um, and I do uh, real estate as well, uh, wills and estates as well. So that's, what specifically uh, took you into real estate? Um, I think a big part of it was just, you know, the, a big part was the lifestyle aspect of it because it, 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 a big part of it from our end, I know it's a lot different for bro- brokers or realtors, but uh, uh, as a lawyer, our, our big, our work time is, you know, kind of banker's hours in a way, because that's when we can actually mostly get, get things done. I mean, I can deal with emails and that kind of stuff, meetings after, but the kind of, I guess the big crux of the work is it happens during the day. And I'm, I'm pretty involved in, in my, you know, with my family and stuff, as far as, you know, I want to be help coach my kids hockey teams I want to be able to to do that kind of stuff and you can set your own hours you're not at the whim of the court uh, uh, as you would be if you're in litigation that sort of thing so a lot of it had to do with that but mostly it's, it's just like it's a it's a good industry to be in it's, it's Saskatoon's been busy with real estate for well, quite a while now it's been a very uh, happening place for real estate for the last 15 years or so um, so it's been a, a good thing to get into that way um, and I enjoy, you know, you get to meet, you meet a lot of new people because you, you know, where if you're doing a lot of litigation stuff, you know, you'll have a client, you'll have a file that goes on for years where real estate, you know, you know, a long one might be a month or two. Uh, that's a very long one. A lot of it's, you know, within a week or week or two, you're done, done the real the deal. It's done and it's on to the next one. So you get to meet new people and I, I enjoy that aspect of it too. So. Great stuff. So, Berkeley, let's dive into it. Why is the legal process important, and why can't folks just go to a lender, get the cash, and change hands and get the house? Well, a big part of that is uh, number one, the banks won't allow that. Uh, banks need a, a lawyer to be able to deal with these funds, uh, and the main reason being that uh, they put us under trust conditions uh, that we have to follow. You know. Uh, we have to make sure that title does register in the name of the, of the client as well as uh, their mortgage gets registered. Uh, again, that's not something that just every, an everyday person has the ability to do. To do. Um, and again, they, they, the banks require, when, when you hire a lawyer, the lawyer is obviously working for you as, as the client, but they're also working for the bank. They, they do have a, a due diligence to deal with a, a duty to the bank as well. Um, so the big thing there, I, was, I always tell clients this as far as that goes, it's important uh, to understand that I, you know, that that is the case where you can't come in. Uh, there's uh, you can't tell me something in confidence uh, that I'm I can't tell that I'm not going to tell a bank. So if you tell me, and it that has happened before, where I say you know I can't be your lawyer anymore basically because I, I I can't deal with this anymore. And they, um, it's a situation where they got to realize that you know it's a two way street for me to deal with. And that's one of the reasons the banks do require. It. So that's one of the reasons you can't. Uh, do that if you are getting mortgage. And another big part of it is, you know, it's required by the bank, but it's also protection for the client as well. The client wants to make sure when they go to get that house, 
that a their mortgage is getting registered and all that, but any previous mortgage that may have been untitled from the previous owner is getting removed as well. And that is my job to make sure that that they are going to get that house with a clear title, you know, except, you know, there'll be, there will be things on title as far as, you know, infrastructure from SAS, Tel, SAS power, those things often will be on, you'll look at a title, you'll see those things. Uh, Cause there, there is that the, those, those corporations need access to land to, you know, fix their, their infrastructure. But besides that, all that should be entitled normally after you bought that house is uh, your new mortgage. And that's part of our job to make sure that you do get that clear title uh, when you get the house. Fantastic. So take us through the process and what people should be expecting as far as documents, how long it takes. Um, you know, it, it's, a, it can be a variety of different lengths of time and uh, for, Preferably from our end, we always like, you know, a couple of weeks to kind of start dealing on a file, but that doesn't seem to stop people from uh, buying a house and wanting to take possession three days later sometimes, or, you know, two days later and having the, and in that case, we have to wait for the, the instructions that come to you from the lender, from the realtor, all that. Um, and it's not ideal, but it happens sometimes. But, you know, ideally, we, if you, the, the more time you give your lawyer, the better, uh, usually less, less likelihood of a, uh, error popping up or missing things. So normally the way it, the process goes from my end is either I or a client will contact me, let me know this is they're buying a property. I'll just, you know, I usually ask, well, you're using a realtor, you're using a broker, who, where are they, where's all that coming from? Tell them to get, tell their, their representatives from both part, both sides to get the documents to me. And once I get them, usually get them in for an appointment. I like to do, you know, a week or so before uh, possession, that's usually ideal or, or within that last week, uh, at least a few days before possession. Uh, I don't normally like to see people too, early in the process because quite often things can change. Um, you, you, if I, you know, I might get mortgage instructions for somebody a month before, but in the meantime, say something's changed with their mortgage, you know, in that extra month, uh, say if they got a new interest rate or maybe they changed payments or they wanted, they had to all of a sudden a new debt popped up and they had to add their dad as a, a co-signer. So I always like to wait as close to possession, you know, as, as possible, it, it, you know, to a point, we usually like three days to five days. That's kind of ideal for me to get see clients before. And then we're kind of at that, that finish line to get it all done up. And, you know, this whole uh, pandemic has brought things in a different uh, kind of brought things differently as well, where, you know, normally before it was all meet, meeting in person, which I always, I still prefer if possible, but, you know, we're all doing what we can to kind of uh, keep this virus under wraps. So one of the ways we do that is to uh, now we're able to meet via Zoom that was actually instated by the Law Society after when the pandemic first hit. Um, and we are now allowed to meet people via Zoom. And I'd probably do now, I bet you 90, 95% of my uh, meetings via Zoom. Um, and it's, it's got its good points and its bad points. Uh, I always like to meet, see people in person. It's just a better way to do business, I find. But now that you can, you, it's a nice alternative um, that way. So again, I, I'll explain them the, the, as far as it goes via zoom or via in person i'll set up our meeting um once i get that another important thing right around that area is also i always make sure that they they do have their fire insurance lined up their their home slash fire insurance banks do require that to be in place if you are buying a house if you're buying a condo the insurance from the uh condo board usually will suffice there but i still recommend all clients get insurance uh, even in those cases where they're not necessarily required to by the bank but that is something i need in order to uh if you're buying a house to i need that fire insurance in place um, and then, yeah, we just do the meeting. That's when I'll witness them signing all the required documents for the mortgage and any, anything else that needs to be signed. They then, I, I email them, they print them off, send them, uh, sign them during the meeting, then they send them back and we kind of get things rolling that way. And then at that time, they'll also be providing me all the cash I need to close the deal. That'd be the down payment, plus all the fees, disbursements, any adjustments we need to do. And again, since the pandemic happened, we used to just, they bring in a, a bank draft, uh, but now quite often just get them to do a direct transfer into our account. Quite often clients will ask, well, can I give you a personal check? That doesn't usually suffice. Uh, that, the reason being I need guaranteed funds in my account. Checks take a while to clear. So we usually do require that that is either direct deposit or bank draft <clears throat> provided to us. And yeah, once that you get that money to me, uh, that's kind of that point, kind of the end of it. I take care of the rest as far as getting possession for the clients. Fantastic. So that kind of leads us into our next question. And when you're sitting down with a client or in COVID case, if you're Zooming with a client, are there times that you find that people are surprised by a certain thing or certain costs that kind of take them by surprise that maybe they weren't <clears throat> expecting during that process? Yeah, that does happen time to time. The big, 
like I do get asked quite often for quotes uh, for, from clients or, or realtors or brokers, and I'm very happy to provide quotes. There are certain things I can't quote on though. And, and you know, some of those are, um, and I know, I think we had talked about this earlier on uh, one being that, you know, there's, if you're getting, if you're getting an insured mortgage, uh, there is, you know, your, your uh, the premium that you are, you are, that is part of your mortgage that gets added to your mortgage has PST on it. And that is a, a big, you know, it can sometimes be a thousand dollars worth of PST on that insurance. So that is something that quite often I kind of hope and rely on mortgage brokers to pass that information on. Cause again, that's a, uh, can be a nice thing that I get, I get blamed for down the road when it has, you know, it has really nothing to do with me. Don't shoot there. the messenger. Yeah. It, that's exactly it. When, it. when it first came in, it was just a few years ago. Uh, the amount of people I had screaming at me, uh, about this and i was like well you know i i didn't didn't, i didn't bring this psd in effect and it's just it's something you have to pay um and again that that was when it was all first starting and it wasn't always pervaded by uh, mortgage brokers because again that's when they should probably hear about it and uh, it's gotten a lot better now Uh, most mortgage brokers that i know we're dealing with are very good at explaining that is part of uh, you know can be a pretty hefty expense um that's a really a big one i mean but then i also can't you know there's tax adjustments say the previous owner has already paid taxes for the year. You know, that's, and say you're buying the property in June. You say, well, they've already paid for the full year. You have to pay them back half. And that could sometimes be a couple thousand dollars, depending on, you know, where you're, where you're buying your property. Or what can the taxes we quickly are. focus so again, on that for just a away. second, Berkeley? When, when doing the taxes, can you just elaborate on that point? Because that was something that took me by surprise when I was buying my first home. And it might have been explained to me, but it just kind of went by. But just explain that process of taxes and how that sometimes plays out as a client is buying a, a new purchase. <laughs> Yeah, taxes can be the sometimes some. It all, it all depends on the time of year. Uh, the taxes can be the bane of our existence. Uh, in the city of Saskatoon, we well, just use Saskatoon as an example here. Taxes are due um, if you're just paying a lump sum for the year. Taxes are due at the end of June. Uh, this year, because of COVID, they actually pushed it out a few months. But I'm guessing next year, let's hope that things are a bit more normal and they are due at the end of June. Um, so again, if you're if that's the case, say you own a house, you're paying your taxes uh, lump sum for the whole year. Say they're four thousand dollars. By the end of June, you have to pay four thousand dollars, and that covers your 2021 taxes. They're due halfway through the year. Um, so and another option for paying taxes, and I'll kind of explain the options first, then I'll talk about the adjustment situations uh, for each one. Uh, the second option is to go on something called TIPS. So that's the Tax Installment Payment Program that the City of Saskatoon has. And that allows a, a, a homeowner to pay their taxes monthly. So then, you know, just kind of like your mortgage payment, once a month, beginning of the month, your tax payments uh, come up. And again, that's a nice, easy way to, so you don't have to come up with a big chunk of, of dough every year, it's just another monthly payment. Okay. Another way you can pay your taxes is through the bank. Uh, the bank sometimes will say they were to want to collect the taxes and pay them for the client. Um, people ask, quite well, which way should I, they go? And again, it's usually up to you. Uh, I usually say don't do it through the bank if you have the option. Um, deal with it yourself because it's it just a little less confusing and, and uh, doing it through the bank can cause some issues down the road possibly. Um, okay, and so we get back, pay your taxes. So as far as the adjustments go, um, paying your taxes lump sum, say you bought a house in July. Previous owners already paid the taxes for the year. So again, they paid the $4,000. And I'm just using that as an example number, $4,000. Well, say you bought it July 1st. Basically, when you buy that property, you're going to have to pay the previous owner $2,000 because they've already paid the $4,000. For the full year. For the full year, exactly. So now they've done that. When you go deal with the lawyers, uh, you're coming in to see me, I'm going to be asking you for an extra two grand to provide to the other, to the seller. And again, that is something that it's that's something I can't, when I give a quote, I can't tell you that because I'm not, every time I'm doing a quote, I'm not pulling the taxes because um, it, it costs money. So that is something clients can, if they want, possibly through their realtor, ask, how did they pay taxes? I mean, it doesn't happen that often, but again, if they give you the heads up, that's something that you possibly could do. Um, so again, that's one way. If, it, if it, Again, if it's monthly, well, then the previous, you know, say the previous owner's already paid, say they're doing a month. So say you bought the place in, and I'll just use April, for example. The April 15th is your possession date. The previous owner will just pay monthly taxes every month in the city for while they live there. They would have paid April 1st, okay? So now you're just going to be paying them back half that month. So you basically, you know, say the taxes for the month are 300 bucks, well, you're going to pay them back $150. Then you will take over taxes going forward after that. 
Um, either you can do it via tips, um, the monthly payment program. You could do the lump sum where you just pay it out. Um, sometimes again, like I said, the bank may start paying it. And one of the reasons the bank, uh, I don't always like that as an option is you can see the situation there. Say the previous owners paid up till April, you pay them back half the month. You're responsible for the next uh, January, February, March, April, I guess that's, yeah, eight months, um, the rest of the year. The bank though is going to want to pay your taxes at the end of June. So they're not going to have a full month, a full year worth of taxes. They're only going to have maybe a month or two that you've paid them up till that point. So you may have to provide them a lump sum for the rest of the year. Uh, to prepay. Short. Exactly. So again, you'll be making that monthly payment to them continuously, but you're also doing that lump sum to the bank as well. So that, quite often, that's one of the reasons I don't, I, I don't recommend the bank if you have the choice, because you may have that initial lump sum payment to cover that first year worth of taxes, which right. can be you know, half the amount of money. Especially if someone has already put a bunch of their cash liquidity into putting a down payment on a house, they might not have that yeah. amount of exactly, money yeah. to, to come up for that. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of times people think, well, I'm at the bank. Oh, this is easy. Now they take the payments out every month. It's, it's simple. But again, it can. I've had a lot of clients that are not very happy after the fact that they realized, oh, I've got to come up with this $2,000 that is kind of tough uh, to come up with right now. So again, I, that's why I do recommend if you can do taxes on your own, do it. Quite often the banks may say you have to. And if you push them hard enough, they, they may just allow you to do it on your own. Um, I, I found that that has happened in the past. So for sure. But something you should be prepared for either way that you have to be yeah. aware of this when you're buying a place. Exactly. Yeah. Be prepared for a tax adjustment. Again, I can't quote that. Like I said, um, that's one thing. Another big thing that does pop up as far as extra fees uh, are an extra amount you have to come up with. There's a, another couple of things I brought up. I know we had talked about this before as well. Uh, the first time home buyer initiative. Uh, again, that's one of those things that has come out in the last uh, year or so. Um, where they, the government is providing a, you know, more or less a interest free uh, loan uh, that you, it's, a, it's an additional mortgage that gets added to your title. Uh, but along with that comes extra costs. One of them being, you know, it's an extra mortgage for the lawyer to deal with. So, you know, it's, there's going to be extra legal fees. There's additional uh, uh, disbursements as well. Cause now we have to, instead of registering one mortgage, we have to register two mortgages, which, you know, 160 bucks to register a mortgage. So that adds that as well. Um, those are the big additional costs, you know, usually it could end up costing you an extra 500 bucks because of this additional mortgage you're getting. And as well, there are other lenders and FCT is a title insurance company. They have a portal that we receive a lot of the instructions from any mortgage that comes through FCT. They have a $315 fee as well. That again, clients aren't always aware of when they're getting these mortgages and that all of a sudden I have to explain to them, here's, here's this fee, uh, that, that this, this, uh, portal is charging uh, to deal with your documents. So there are things like that that pop up. And again, again, stuff I cannot quote uh, uh, all the time, just because of the, uh, the situation I'm, I'm in at that, at that time, I don't have access to all that info. So. And it's not necessarily something that you're making money on. It's just a part of the process that's happening yeah. th when buying a house. No, I know. Yeah, exactly. There's not, I, I'm not doing it for any gain for myself. It's just something that you know, maybe down the line wasn't possibly explained to them uh, as well as it should have been. Because I, again, this one FCT fee I was talking about, I've had brokers I've worked with for years and they, I talked to them about that. They had no idea that it was even there. Because again, it's not something they see. It's not something they've ever been told before. So um, there are things like that that can pop up. And, and again, I don't, I don't do it to, to, you know, to make money or I'm not doing it to be, you know, greasy or anything like that. It's just part of the process. So, so for, you know, the average Joe out there, who should they be expecting to inform them on this stuff? Should they be hoping that they're finding someone along the real estate journey that is going to be taking them through this stuff? Or, or can they rely on a specific person, the realtor, the, the mortgage professional, the lawyer? Um, where, where does the average person go to get this information? Well, I, I think it's kind of the, it's important for all three of those uh, people you listed there to, to be on board, to explain the things they need to explain. Um, and it's, that's why, again, communication is so important between the, uh, all three people, the lawyer, the, the broker and the realtor to kind of make things happen and, and get things done. Because if there's no communication that way, things can get missed and information doesn't get past the client that they need to, 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 you know, to be making informed decisions and knowing, where their money may be going. So again, it's, sure. it's unfortunate sometimes when I do get clients in where they, uh, again, I'm, I'm going through and they're, and they're saying, well, you know, my, my realtor told me my fees would be this much. And I was like, well, if you looked at the bottom of my 
quote that I have provided, I do say I cannot quote you for these things because I don't know what they're going to be. Certainly. And yeah, those yeah. are things that could possibly be explained by a, like, you know, yeah. Yeah. By the, by, you know, the PST, obviously explained by the broker uh, communication with the other realtors asking them what have they done for taxes? That's a, you know, that is an important information that can be passed on if, if people are, are, are looking into these things. So. Fantastic. So much great information for someone who's out there looking to buy a home and maybe they're like, oh, okay, maybe I need to get more ducks in a row as I'm looking to, to get into this place. Is there anything else that people should know about the, the process of yeah. the, from the legal side? Yeah. I, I, one of the things I, and I've noticed is a lot, it's, it's been a very busy uh, last, you know, six, seven months in real estate. It's been actually a very crazy time. Um, and what happens there is that we don't always are not able to always get the final reports out to clients. Quite, quite often clients want their documents, you know, say, I don't know if they want their signed mortgage or just something showing their name on title. List. And, you know, when it gets busier, that's kind of stuff kind of gets put on the back burner because it's, I'm more worried about people getting into their houses than, you know, after the fact, getting documents to them uh, to, you know, to have. Uh, and again, it's important to people, but again, it's not something that we always, so that, that is quite often I, I'll get calls a week later, like, well, am I getting my documents? And I do often explain in the meetings, like it takes a month to two months, you know, during regular times to get these out because we're waiting on things from a bank, that kind of uh, final discharges of mortgage stuff from the other lawyer. So yeah, one to two months is kind of regular for in normal times. And now it just kind of gets pushed a little bit just because of how busy it has been. And again, it's all due to the fact that the, you know, and I, I'll, I don't usually really say it to clients, but my thought process is, you know, I, when I was trying to get you possession on your house, I wasn't having, you know, my assistant wasting your time getting reports done for people a month before they're trying to get you in the house. So we're, we try to keep up on that, but, uh, you know, priority is always to get people into that place because that's, that's the most important aspect of it. So that is one thing. It's like, you know, just be patient with that stuff to, to come again. It's not something you generally need besides to have, you know, people type A people like to file their stuff away. And I understand that, but it isn't something you generally need to have to, you know, say you own the property. So. Fantastic. That's great information, Berkeley. And uh, to kind of take it away from the legal aspect now, a question that we ask everyone who comes on the podcast, if you were looking to buy your dream property in Saskatchewan, where does Berkeley Butch Co go to get that dream property? You know, I, I live right now, I live in a, an older home in, in Buena Vista. Um, and it's not, you know, it's, it's, uh, I'm not, as much as I deal with houses and stuff, I'm not really that I'm not as much into real estate as like, you know, I'm not always looking at houses. I'm not looking like that's more my wife's end of things. I got a just a nice, simple house. I would like a newer place here soon, but nothing crazy, uh, pretty, uh, practical as far as that goes. And just kind of in the same neighborhood I'm in. Um, I like that area. It's a nice, mature neighborhood with big trees, lots of parks around and, uh, you know, we got a nice little yard. So I, I wouldn't want to move too far from where I'm right now. So um, that's great. I'm, I'm pretty, great to hear. pretty boring, pretty boring answer. <laughs> I pretty really boring. like it. A lot of people have gone for uh, lakes, places by the golf course. So it, it's, it's nice yeah. to hear that you're, you're very happy with where you are. Don't get me wrong. I, I could use a house that uh, is a little better shape. Uh, that's for sure. <laughs> but uh, I'm not the handiest guy in the world either. So you're looking more for the renovation money. budget to add on to the exactly, end. Exactly. Exactly. You betcha. Yeah. Great stuff. Berkeley, is there anything else to add on uh, the legal process in this before we let you go today? You know, not really. I mean, a lot of times uh, the big thing is uh, the process can be as easy or as difficult as sometimes people make it. It's just a lot of it is just communication sometimes. And and again, uh, when lawyers get busy, it's, you know, it's not always going to be, uh, it's not always the ability to get back instantaneous. And I think that is quite often the, the expectation because I know, again, in uh, brokers and realtors are very accessible all the time. Like that's kind of how they are able to make their mark and be able to get, but quite often for us, it's, it's, we have kind of, we try to run it a little, we are pretty accessible still. Like I answer emails at night, that kind of stuff, but it's, it's one of these things where, you know, you just, it, it's communication is key. Um, it's, it's just not always going to happen instantaneous. <laughs> That's a big, which a big I can confirm it. because I emailed you last night about coming on the, the podcast. This is on a Monday that we're recording this and I emailed you Sunday night, I think at nine 45 and you responded within five minutes. So. Yeah, I, I guess I tried. I, I on the weekends again. I try to, I, like I said, I'm pretty. In, uh, I like hanging out with the family quite a bit, so I try to limit. I kind of have time to. I'll look at my phone for for emails here and there, but I, again, it's 
but a big part is the communication. I think a lot of uh, things can be uh, missed if you don't communicate properly. So it is important to you know, always relay everything that you can between all the parties involved, realtors, brokers, clients, lawyers. It's important to have open lines of communication. So Great. And if people did want to open that line of communication with you, Berkeley, uh, how can they get in contact with you? Um, you know, email is usually the best uh, way to get a hold of me, bbutchko at culinary.com. You know, if you want, just Google Berkeley Butchko Lawyer, usually the best way to to get to find all my contact information um phone number 306-477-7206 that is my direct line um but yeah emails are a great way to get a hold of me uh normally that's the best uh usually best response time there so that's great well on behalf of everyone who's watching thank you so much for running us through that i'm sure we'll get you on again if there's anything that pops up on the legal side you gave us some excellent information so really appreciate you coming on today okay thank you so much Thanks again to Berkeley for coming on the podcast. If you're interested in learning more information, feel free to reach out and touch base with him. If you're in the early stages of potentially buying a home, feel free to reach out to me. I would be happy to provide more information and let you know how close you are to home ownership. This has been the Saskatchewan Real Estate Podcast. If you like this episode, find more information and episodes on our Facebook and YouTube pages. If you'd like to be a guest or have a conversation you'd like to learn more about, let us know by messaging the show on Facebook. Thanks for listening.